was the night before Christmas. I was closing down for Hello. So it is present me in December 12th. But technically to you, future me from the end, well, at least towards the end of this vlog. Coming to you, because I just got my little package in from the sponsor of this video, and the sponsor of this video is Ana Luisa. So I have worked with Ana Luisa multiple times. You'll have heard about this company several times on my channel, and that is because I really do genuinely enjoy their jewelry and also just the message that they stand for. So their whole entire mission is just to be completely sustainable. Reduce, reuse, recycle, all of the good stuff that comes with sustainability, and you can really see that in their products, and because of this, it also reflects in their incredible pricing. These these prices can start from $39 ranging to the higher end pieces so really there is truly something for everybody with Ana Luisa and with their amazing holiday sale that they have going on right now it is actually for the US specifically buy one get one 40% off plus a free travel case with purchases that are $150 or more and then for the international buyers it is buy one get one still 40% off which includes their seamless end of the year shopping experience online. You have ready to go boxes, personalized gift notes, and speedy worldwide shipping. So you can either treat yourself to something or it is the absolute perfect gift. So if you want to head over to Ana Luisa, check out their sustainable jewelry and their absolutely amazing prices, definitely do so down below. I have the code and everything all ready for you. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and let's get to record scratch the actual book update that I started this off with because it was it was a thing. Good morning everybody. So it is like <laughs> so dark outside, but it doesn't look like it judging by this. For some reason this camera, I swear, is the best thing ever. It makes every dark room look like 10 times brighter. It looks like it's straight up middle of the day right now in this lighting, at least I think. So I have finished one book and I have started another one. Also welcome to Vlogmas, <laughs> day 11. So I finished Such a Fun Age last night yesterday like yesterday afternoon ish is when i finished it but i didn't feel like <laughs> filming and editing my end clip of it for the vlog that i literally just put up not even five minutes ago so i really liked this one a lot everything that i said about it being a really good book for specifically um white people white like progressive people to read it's still very important i stand by that idea i think that it was really well done i really enjoyed the pacing once i finished the book and i kind of got a whole picture in the beginning it was fairly slow but then i realized it's really more of just like setting up the real scene for the end scene which was very very much a lot, I don't know. One writing thing that I really liked, this has nothing to do with the contents of the story, nothing like that, it's just the writing style and like a choice that the author made at the end. It almost felt like it was the end of a movie where it shows like Uncle Joe went on to go to Cambridge and da 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 da. Susie did this da 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 and went on to do this. Like it was that scene at the end where it shows where each character eventually ended up. So I, I literally pictured as we were going through and each time a, another character was brought up, like a record scratch, like a freeze frame of them like in the middle of laughing or like doing something and then it like popping up letters saying, this one went on to go to college and be an amazing person in life. Like I just thought it was so funny. I really like when books write in a way that I have seen it shown in movies but haven't seen it written before and so that was just a random thing that I did but I ended up giving it four stars I seriously seriously recommend reading this if 
I feel like if nonfiction isn't really your thing, because I'm either all like in a straight up nonfiction mood, or you could not pay me money to pick up nonfiction. I don't know why I waver between the two. It's the same with romance, like just certain genres. I'm like, if it's my idea, I'm excited about it. But if I know that I want to read something and then all of a sudden I don't feel like it, it's just not happening. But I feel like if nonfiction isn't your thing, this is a good book to read. And I still think there are things that help to educate yourself in. And more so going and watching other people's reviews of this, specifically black reviewers. So I left a link down below to a video that I watched last night in my vlog from yesterday. But I will put it down here again because I'm talking about it again. And definitely go check that out. But yeah, Reese Witherspoon picked another very good book so maybe i should just make my way through all the books she's ever picked for her book club sounds like a plan next one i picked up kind of has um something in common which is just like the main character is an influencer but i picked up people like her i got this from book of the month it comes out january 12th i think and i'm already obsessed with it i it's only 267 pages i think or it's either 267 or 297 no it's 270 ish but I'm already on page 69 because I literally could not sleep reading it last night. So we are following this lady, what is your name? Emmy, who she is this like mommy Instagrammer, momstagrammer, momstagrammer. Kind of like that. And she basically just makes a living off of showing all the ups and downs, mainly downs. She kind of curates herself to look like a down to earth person, but she's not, which is interesting. It's just very interesting in the fact of showing like the reality I think of like a lot of influencers, especially the bigger ones that I feel like people really look up to and envy in a way. This really exposes that where it's like they probably do everything that they're doing on purpose because they have marketing teams and managers and all kinds of people that look and see what the algorithm favors as well as what people tend to like and then they literally change themselves to fit the bill. But in this one, we also are getting little snippets in every other channel chapter or so from someone who is stalking her and trying to find her. So it's super creepy. I super hate it. Like this is not a spoiler, but it's an example. There's like a picture that she posts and then from that person's point of view, we see them basically Sherlock Holmes their way into finding out where she lives from like three letters that were in the picture of a street sign across the street from her. It's like my biggest fear <laughs> when it comes to posting online. It's literally what I feel like people my age and older were raised on with our parents being like, never even look at the internet, people will find you. And yeah, it's a great time. It's also raining a lot, so I feel like this creepy book, I just got a coffee it's raining I'm excited I'll probably finish this one today to be honest now let's talk about my owl crate or uh, no let's not talk about owl crate anymore how about let's talk about my fairy loot because I'm sad it's here <laughs> but the question is do I want it here I mean yes but she's busted so I'm sad <laughs> basically is what I'm getting at. So I'm still gonna unbox everything, but I had to email them because my book is like, so there's like this whole discussion going on. Well, I deleted my Facebook, but when I had one, I was in this Facebook group where it was a bunch of people who collect special editions, like all the fairy loot editions, all that kind of thing. And it was kind of like a discussion that would pop up every week, kind of like how consumerism I feel like pops up very frequently on booktube. This discussion pops up very frequently within exclusive editions, book boxes, whatever groups on Facebook. And it was is that what amount of damage do you deem worthy of emailing asking for a new copy so personally if it's damage anywhere except for the spine and it's I'm talking like if the dust covers like bent a little bit if it's scuffed if it's damage that I would find on a book in a bookstore which I would argue, unless you're searching through the books to find the least damage one, which I mean, I do do that. But if it's one that I would find on the shelf in the bookstore, I'm not gonna email. The only time I email is when the spines are showing or when there's damage on the spine because the spines show on my bookshelves for the most part. I don't want that part to show and look bad. But even then, if it's like at the very top or the very bottom and it's just the dust jacket, I'm like, that's okay. That it's not a big deal because I know that I'm sure there are way more damaged copies. It's probably very stressful to try to keep fulfilling orders and then also do the damaged things and repair 
that issue, but this one's like bad, bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you, but let's go through the other items first. So first up, we have a set of bookmarks, and on one side are some girlies, and then on the other side are men. So I think this one goes with serpent and dove, and then this one is obviously Akatar. And then I'm not 100% sure on these ones. And the last one I'm going to go ahead and assume is having to do with our actual book that's in this box. Which, the reason honestly that I'm so sad is because I was so excited for this book. And this, this edition is like so beautiful. So beautiful. So I just want like, it's a be okay. Then we have a tote from The Cruel Prince. Which, not gonna lie, as a teacher, I will literally take any tote you throw my way. I always need them. There's never a time I won't need them. And I just think they're straight up adorable. I just need to find a way to store them better. Next up we have, oh, we have a bunch of tarot cards. Well, I don't know why I have these two. Maybe these were some missing ones, but this is definitely from Nevernight. And then we have two from crescent city so let's talk about um it's just called her thumbelina honestly spot the difference uh i can spot the difference why is she like she's thick i didn't know that she's got hips i i don't know why i legitimately pictured thumbelina when i was reading that book and now to find out like i almost just said she's thicky smalls <laughs> I need to not record before coffee is in the system. Uh, this, I guess, is probably a scarf. I don't know from what, but I like this color. Let's see. Do you see it? Where is it from? I don't know. But man, it's really pretty. I never really know what to do with scarves and stuff like this because I don't wear them. But like, that's really cute. Aw, oh, shoot. This is adorable. It's like a little hair tie. Ooh, and it's silk. That is so nice. My first thought, though, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been doing the sock curls, you know? A silk sock curl? No. My hair gets so staticky in the winter. That's not meant to be. But what if? And we have a Angel Fall screen cleaner thing. Just trust me, that's what that is. Is this another? What is this? Oh, hello. I don't know what this is. It's something, though. That's for sure. Let's look, because I actually am very confused. <laughs> so we have the scrunchie, the tote bag, the bag hanger. Is that the bag hanger? Oh, that's actually kind of cool. My bag is incredibly heavy, so I don't think that would work for me. But love the idea, not gonna lie. So yeah, also before I show the book, I just wanted to say the reason I'm showing, like I'm not trying, I've already emailed them. I've already, they've already contacted me on Instagram when I posted about it. I'm probably gonna, I hope get a, uh, not a refund. I just want the book to be okay. So the, the reason I'm being so honest about these boxes on my actual channel is because I talk about them in such a good light when they're good and I know that people have commented before that they have subscribed because of my videos and because I talk about them and that I help them find out or whatever so I feel like I need to also follow it up when there are issues so that people know that there are issues because I know that sometimes like I'm not on Facebook anymore so when there's really big issues with book boxes I don't know unless it somehow makes it to Instagram so I know that that's the case for other people maybe they just watch YouTube they don't go on to other social media like that. So it's not to bash them or to do anything like that. It's just to be honest so that you guys know where I stand. Currently, Illumicrate is bae. I commented that I might not have any book boxes in 2021 because this is, so I never got my September fairy loot box. And then I emailed them in October and they said to give it like essentially two weeks to ship. And then I waited and I waited and I waited even longer than before because of COVID delays and all of that and then I never got it so I still have not got my September fairy loot box and now this one came damaged so I'm just like maybe I should just not have book boxes but when I say that I don't mean Illumicrate I just mean like the ones that I had chosen because they do be slipping so first of all just look at these isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful book. My only thing that I'm so sad about is the spine because it's like I don't know if you can see it 
I hope that that shows, but it's like damage, damage. It's not even just damage there. It's damage like on the actual physical book itself, which is sad, but this I think personally from where the damage is and how nothing else in the box was damaged. And actually this is the nicest way I've received a fairy loot box. Like it is the least dented one I've ever had. I think that this was definitely an issue at like the warehouse or with the book shipment. So that's why I'm kind of like, a little more upset because I feel like this sh like I've just I guess I don't understand and maybe I don't know the process like this should have been seen but it's scraped so bad and dented so bad the plastic that I think goes over like this in a thin layer has now come up and ripped off and so it just all around looks really bad but yeah so I emailed them all of that good stuff yada 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 I have not got a response back but hopefully I will soon and yeah that was it that's all I've got. So now I'm actually going to go and catch up on some planner stuff. I'm gonna show you guys that because my two spreads, the spread for last week and the spread for this week, I bought a bunch of Christmas sticker kits and they're just so cute. They're literally the cutest ones to get recently, I feel like. So I wanna show you because I'm very, very happy with them. And then I'm going to continue reading people like her. So, yeah. Hello, welcome to an awful angle. But there's a tree in the back, so that's nice. But I got packages, so I gotta open them now. So these are the packages. <laughs> they got here yesterday, but I didn't film after my initial thing. Man, look at me exposing our tower of water. Anyways. <laughs> I didn't film yesterday after I got them because we went to dinner and we got Panera. So we didn't like go out to dinner or anything, but man, I can't drive in the dark y'all. I'm a mess. So uh, it took a lot longer than it was meant to, but I have three packages now and I believe they're all from Miss Savannah Scribbles, which basically inspires me for every single bullet journal spread because she has the most gorgeous gorgeous journal Instagram. So I will link her down below. Y'all need to check her out. It's basically what inspired my entire like book review journal because the aesthetic is just... So let's open these. Oh, it's wrapped. <laughs> I'm trying to do it all secretly and it's in tissue paper. Oh, but I can see what it is. Oh wait, shut up. You're lying. So it is A Court of Wings and Ruin. It's the new cover, which yes, I talked a lot of trash about. No, I don't regret it, but I will say these hard covers, uh, they're better than the paperback versions of these new ones. I don't mind the hardcover edition. I wish they would have kept this like hot pink or just the colorful spine and then kept this, the gray background and the pink letters like that, whatever color. But isn't the new one coming out like orange for what? I don't know. Thank you. I'm very excited to reread these. I am rereading them because Molly and Mel are doing a Akatar read along and this month it's Akatar, which I need to actually, you know, read. But I haven't yet because I've been reading about murder, which, okay, so the next one is not wrapped. Ha ha ha. Let me guess, is it, could it be Akatar? Oh, hello, please don't rip. Oh, it is. It's Akatar. Oh, did you get me like the whole set? Cause that's real nice. Plus this is like a thick one. So I'm assuming that this is probably gonna be Akamath. Is Akamath green? That's a choice. Yes, yes. I don't understand this <laughs> at all. Cause okay, they all look the same this way like they all like the covers and stuff with like the gray color then the bright letters i get that but then from the side what's going on there's like no continuity about what's happening with these covers i don't understand i don't understand but thank you so much for sending these to me i'm going to annotate these editions because my old ones i'm gonna keep because listen so many people talk trash about the old covers and for what the book is, those covers make sense. And I will stand by that. These covers don't make a whole lot of sense, but aesthetically, they're not bad. 
I just think they don't fit the vibe <laughs> at all. This book is what created Soapgate, you know? So ah, these are just such serious covers, like such actual fantasy, serious fantasy covers. And I just feel like Sarah J Mass is not, I would not describe Akatar as a serious fantasy. And by serious, I don't mean like legitimate. I mean like, this looks like it's about intense warfare, but it's about fairy, intercourse <laughs> anyways thank you so much savannah for sending these my way i am taking this as the sign to start acomath soon so there are some readings from tonight so if i get home from my mother's and time that will be on the agenda but that was it now it is what time is it oh my god it's only 10 o'clock uh it's only 10 o'clock so uh yikes anyways i'm gonna go bye Okay, so I have my book and I'm watching Reagan's new reading vlog, but I've been getting questions about how I make my hot chocolate, so I'm going to show you guys how I do that. It's really easy. It's not hard like at all, I promise. First of all, you don't have this cat mug. So I use whipped cream. Basically, the only thing that makes this any different than literally every other hot chocolate is I put it in my cup, I put whipped cream in the cup first, and then I put cinnamon with it, and then I put it under like the Keurig, and I let the Keurig do its thing, but it makes the hot chocolate on top of the, um, it makes the hot chocolate on top of the actual whipped cream. That's literally the only difference. It's really not <laughs> groundbreaking or anything, but it does, tastes better. I kind of like it because, I mean, this is made with water, so it gives it a little bit of, you know, some, some. So that's it. It's really easy, I promise. All right, girls, gays, queers, and theys, let's talk books. So I have picked up a book. I solely blame Mel for this. Yes, I've already read this series, 
Yes, I'm in the middle of my reread and I stopped because I realized I have so many books to read, but she was reading up the sprints last night while she was reading one of them, and it's the one I really want to get to. The whole reason I'm rereading this series, to be quite honest. So I have to pick up Queen of Shadows. These are the, are, is it Nerdy Ink, I believe? If you want to check them out on Instagram, these are the recovers. I think they're adorable. They're amazing. Low-key hoping they will do the same for Actar so that I can cover, not the ones that I just showed, not my Savannah editions. Honestly, that's what I'm going to refer to them as, my Savannah copies. But um, these ones with like the weird half people on them. Like not that they're half people, but legitimately only half their bodies on them. That's what I mean. Any hooters. I am gonna pick this up. I did start it and start tabbing already, so I'm not 100% sure where I'm at in here. But to be quite honest, I'm just gonna pick it back up because Banan is in here, and I'm gonna be real. I couldn't care less about the romance in these books. This series has so much world building and so now that I've read Kingdom of Ash and I know the end game and I know what's happening, rereading Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight made those books good. <laughs> like because of all the setup that you don't realize she's doing. And that's kind of why I'm in here. So I'm here more for the plot and more for the world building because it's just absolutely phenomenal. And I really do enjoy Mass's writing in this series specifically. So I'm not team Rowan. I'm not team Kale. I honestly am team Dorian on his own living his best life like he deserves because I just love Dorian as a character. I also love Manon as a character. Who else do I like? Okay, time's up. So yeah, I'm gonna reread this. Just do a little dabbling moment. And then I have two other books that I'm looking at picking up. Not really sure where it's gonna go. First of all, I need to finish. I am 80% of the way through this on the audiobook and I just need to finish it but for some reason I just don't want to pick it up when I start listening to it I'm like wow yeah this is a really good book this is a good audiobook and I'm at like the peak of the adventure but I think it's because I looked up when the next one comes out and I was like oh choices were made because I read the first one when I was moving into this house and then I'm reading this one now I was hoping it would be out in like the spring ish time so that I wouldn't have a lot of time to forget because it's a very intricate book it's a lay misery telling in space with how many points of view we have and how much of the governmental stuff you have to memorize to get it it is a little bit like I mean, they're 800 page books, so they're long. There's a lot of intricacy to them, so they're complicated, and I just don't wanna forget everything. But I guess I can just watch a recap and be fine. But uh, yeah, this is another one that's on the radar. Just big books this week, I guess. And then Kingdom of the Wicked, I have, like I said, started this. I'm on chapter four. I'm just not sure if I wanna get it, because once I, once I get to this, I'm going to finish it, so I don't know if that's what I wanna do. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't be. <laughs> And then I saw a TikTok that was, I don't know why, POVs come up on my TikTok for you page randomly. Sometimes the, the two things that come up that scare me randomly are straight talk. I don't need to say anything else about that. And then POV slash the Harry Potter where they, what is it called? Well, actually it's like all fandoms are doing it now, but it, it's, they like do these ritualistic things like watching their breathing and all these different techniques to fall asleep but not fall asleep, but to go to another reality. And I'm just like, okay, sure. Have a good time. See you when you get back, right? You're coming back. Um, all I can think about is Insidious, to be quite honest. When that boy tried to go to an alternate reality, it didn't go well. So, uh, hope it goes better than him. But I saw a POV that popped up that was like two families are rivals and then their kids get parted up for a project in school, which Wattpad is calling my name. I, that sounds like a good Wattpad plot. I'd love to read it. But then I thought, why don't I read one that's set in the same setting as the Diviners, which I absolutely adore, although it's not set in New York City, which is fine. It's set in Shanghai. Oh, huh, these are the lights. So I'm gonna read my busted, dusted copy of these Valentines. <laughs> which they did email me back, and they did say that they were gonna try to get one out to me, and they're gonna try to get the September box out to me, which, at this point, I'm gonna be real, I already got a copy of the book in September's box from the U.S., because a book box sent it to me, but I wanted to switch the US cover with the one that they have because I don't like the UK one, but I like their sprayed edges. That's the whole goal. Also, I mean, $45 would be nice to receive the box. But yeah, so these two beauties are gonna be kind of like the ones I'm going in between. And then also, I might end up picking up an audiobook because I have decided 
to do a thing. And I'm going to have a whole video on this because I am going to do my um, like 2021 reading goals and all of that. I've decided that I'm not going to have channel goals this year because my whole goal is just to continue loving doing this and being having a good time. And I'm not going to have a... I'm not going to have a 2021 bullet journal setup video, I don't think, because so much of that was surrounded by me tracking like my statistics and my reading statistics and I don't really want to do that this year I kind of just want to do it and I want to whenever I have a video that I want to do I'm just gonna do it and then talk to you guys because that's really why I love doing this anyways and my only channel goal though is to reply to every single comment because I was doing that when I first started and I thought I was doing a pretty okay job now but let me YouTube sends out sometimes these statistic things for like your year at a glance, essentially. And so I saw mine and I didn't like the statistic of replies to comments that were left. So I got, let me see where it is, 14,800 comments like in total the entire year. Not like, oh my God, could you imagine that in like a day I'd cry. And then I only responded, I responded to 4,000 less than that and I don't want to do that and I know that that's probably when I like just hearted them but I'd rather heart them and then like put a heart or something I don't know I just maybe that doesn't make a difference to y'all to me when a creator does that I get excited because it's like it's not just saying that they hearted a bunch and then kept scrolling hearted a bunch and then kept scrolling it shows that they hearted it put press comment put it in emoji so they like really read it I don't know it's important to me so I want to do that that's my only channel goal other than that um just have a good time, to be honest, is my goal. And maybe more themed reading vlogs. Other than that, that's all I got. My biggest goals are reading the books that I own. So I am really excited about this because the more I look at what I own, I'm not going to lie. I have 100% bought into the consumerism of booktube. No, I'm not going to have that conversation because I'm not really interested in the people that get all prickly because I talk about how I buy books and how I probably should relax and then they think it's a comment on their buying books and when in all honesty I genuinely could not bring myself to care less but uh, this is just about me. I 100% bought into feeling like I needed to have these shelves behind me and that I needed every single book as soon as it came out. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try to chill <laughs> on that. And I'm going to really, if my spending next year is going to be more if I want to genuinely collect books I've already read, I do not own, and I'd like, you know, like a fairy loot comes out with an edition or something like that. That kind of situation. Uh, and then book of the month, because those I get already every month. Other than that, I really want to, like, there's this thing in the planner community, because the consumerism in the planner community, I feel, is very comparable to that in the book community. I think it's a little harder for me to compare it to the makeup one, because in the makeup community, makeup can go bad, and so you can throw it away. To me, books you can, you know, eventually read. I think you just have to be intentional about it. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and be more intentional. But in the planner community, people buy stickers all the time. They buy planners. They buy all this stuff. And it is very easy to get into that because you want the newest, the latest, the hottest, the cutest, whatever thing. And they have this thing called shop your stash because like your sticker stash. So essentially this year I'm gonna be shopping my shelves. And I think I'm gonna do a thing with my TBRs where I shop my shelves. And if I read five books... I can get a certain one. If I read 10 books, I can get a dip, like have kind of tears. And that's maybe, I don't know. I'm sure that some people are probably going to be like, why do you have to make, it's not an incentive so much as it is a accountability thing. Because if I'm being honest, if there's a book, like a exclusive edition, I absolutely want, and I haven't read those five books yet, but it's going to sell out. Am I probably going to buy it? To be honest with myself, yes. I already have a couple 2021 pre-orders that are already bought from Fairy Loot and Illumicrate. So, I mean, that's done. But it's more so for keeping track of how many I'm reading that I own and how many I'm reading that I buy. And my goal is to have it be 5 to 1 or to even 10 to 1 would be the ultimate goal of 10 owned, 1 bought that year so it's not like if i buy five i'm allowed to buy one but it's i want to buy five i mean other way around i want to read five i own for every one that i buy which is not realistic for me to buy 10 books and then read 50 so it's gonna have to be the other way around this is called making your uh, ocd and anxiety work for you which no i'm not just saying ocd like i actually have it okay let's 
disclosure, I guess. Yeah, so that's that's the thing I'm doing. I found a spreadsheet from a blogger that I'm gonna use that she so kindly put up on her blog for 2020, but I'm just gonna edit it for 2021. Like, I made a copy, obviously. I'm not <laughs> going rogue. And then uh, I'm gonna make it a goal for, like, each day this week, log in into, like, one of my bookcases and just see how many books I have, see how many I've read. I know that it is gonna be not equal. But yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna... Oh, wait, I need to talk about this book. I read a book. <laughs> So this is already going well. So I read People Like Her, and I've talked about this earlier. I said it was about a mommy Instagrammer, momstagrammer, momstammer, whatever. Um, this I ended up giving two and a half stars. I rounded it up to three on Goodreads because I think that if it had just been polished a little bit better and maybe the writing had been gone over a few more times, it would have had a lot of my complaints out because there was some very odd wording and choppiness to it that kind of took me out of the story. But it was a very fast paced book and it was very i mean it was creepy to be honest i was like oh listen i gotta <laughs> I gotta log off. But if you, I mean, I'm starting to like this new subgenre within thrillers that are targeting influencers specifically, because I think it is a newer thing and it's something that hasn't been tapped into yet. But uh, as someone who does put their life on the internet, like not as much as she does. Also, half of the horror was watching how much she's just like putting, putting everywhere. And the husband's like, uh, should we do that? And she's like, shut up, Dan and uh, kind of agree with Dan. But the ending of this book, I actually liked it because I think it's accurate. I think it is the most accurate ending, not the like ultimate climax of the villain finally doing what they were gonna do, but the ending with the two characters, it, the main characters, it was so, it was so accurate to I think what people would do in this day and age. So I definitely recommend this one. It is a fun, fast read, fun, Fun, fast, and fresh. 288 pages, which is probably why it's so fast, but it comes out January 12th, so yeah. Now I'm going to actually go. Good boy. And before I close out this video, I just want to say a quick thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this. I'm currently wearing the YA Snake earrings that I showed at the beginning of this one. This ear and I are having a chat because she thinks that she was allowed to close up, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk it out. But yeah, I really like this. They're so lightweight and they're so cute and I really need to wear earrings more. My biggest thing is my ears are so sensitive uh, to any kind of jewelry in them, but these ones haven't done anything bad. So it's looking good and I'm very excited to wear them in all my videos going forward, but remember to check out the link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are, and I'll catch you in my next video. Oh, and the emoji is a snake in honor of the YA snake earring. Bye!